and McElroy. With a miss. Ever seen a sure thing turn sour? That's exactly what went down with Rory McElroy this past weekend. Just when everyone thought Rory had it in the bag, the game took a wild turn, leaving fans and haters alike in total shock. In today's deep dive, we're getting into the real tea, why Rory bailed on facing the press when the going got tough. Stick around as we explain how dodging tough talks might be Rory's biggest miss yet, and see what he could learn from golf's most memorable comebacks and face plants, who stood tall even when the chips were down. Welcome to the Golf Caddy, your gossip place for all the golf drama you can't get enough of. Before we get into today's focus, we'd love to hear from you. What do you think has a bigger impact on a golfer's legacy, their performance in the game, or how they handle the aftermath of a collapse? Do you believe avoiding the media helps or harms an athlete in the long run? Feel free to drop by in the comments section below. We'll be reading along. It wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that Rory McIlroy's golf career has gone to the edge of breaking, especially after the haunting defeat he faced in the U.S. Open this weekend, maintaining his decade-long record of losing. When Rory McIlroy won his fourth major at the 2014 PGA Championship at Valhalla, The golf world prepared itself for the next Tiger Woods. The expectations were indeed high, with the question being not when Rory would win another, but how many he'd win in his career. A decade later, Rory still remains stuck on four major championship titles, a reality that golf fans in 2014 wouldn't have believed. McElroy's drought has been a period of time characterized by consistently strong performances in majors, with yet another on Sunday's second-place finish, his 21st top 10 in one of golf's biggest events. Sadly, Rory McElroy's 10-year wait for a fifth major championship victory continued on Sunday, after the Northern Irishman was pipped by Bryson DeChambeau in agonizing fashion. Having headed into the final round at Pinehurst number 2, three shots behind, McElroy found himself two shots clear of the field with just five holes to play. It proved to be a final stretch to forget for the 2011 champion, though, after bogeying three of his last five holes with two short missed putts. The first of his brutal misses came at the par 4 16th as the Northern Irishman's putt for par from inside three feet failed to drop. This was the first time this season he had missed from such a distance, having holed his previous 496 attempts. The heartache, however, was far from over as the same fate followed at the 18th where a harsh break at the right saw him add a bogey to his card once again. Minutes later, DeChambeau made his way up the 18th, making a remarkable up and down from sand to save par, and won the championship by a single shot. The near miss inflicted yet more pain on McElroy, who still stuck at four runner-up finishes since his last major win at the PGA Championship in 2014. His last also came on the U.S. Open stage, having fallen to the same fate at Los Angeles Golf Club 12 months ago, losing to Wyndham Clark by one shot. His best finish at the Masters came one year prior to that after he had finished in second behind eventual champion Scotty Scheffler. Oh! McElroy also ended the week at the 2018 Open Championship one shot behind Francesco Molinari, tying for second with Kevin Kistner, Xander Shoffley, and Justin Rose. In the 10 years that have followed with back-to-back -back second places, the four-time flagship winner has now finished inside the top 10 21 times, with arguably one of the biggest near misses last Sunday since St. Andrews in 2022. Now, McElroy is forced to dust himself down and give it another shot at next month's Open, but do you think he would be able to perform there after all this history? Let us know in the comment section below. But the center of attention remained how Rory McIlroy chose to react to his defeat. After McIlroy let his chance to win the U.S. Open slip away on Sunday, he also slipped away from the media. Seems like the last place Rory wanted to be at that moment was Pinehurst. He made his getaway by skipping all media interviews, including the customary post-round NBC interview, which is quite unusual for runner-ups who typically speak to reporters following the tournament. This is notable in itself, but it's also notable because McElroy made it notable. McElroy was quick to leave Pinehurst Resort in North Carolina without speaking to the media or even DeChambeau, which resulted in criticism of how he handled the loss. 
fans judged him for being unprofessional and a spoil sport who just ran away from the tough situation. It didn't take long for McElroy to break the silence about this on social media. Rory said he's going to take some time off from golf after a tough day in the final round of the 2024 US Open. Yesterday was a tough day, probably the toughest I've had in my nearly 17 years as a professional golfer. Firstly, I'd like to congratulate Bryson. He is a worthy champion and exactly what professional golf needs right now. I think we can all agree on that. He further added that he will rue a few things over the course of the tournament, including his two missed putts on the 16th and 18th holes on Sunday. As I said at the start of the tournament, I feel closer to winning my next major championship than I ever have. The one word that I would describe my career as is resilient. I've shown my resilience over and over again in the last 17 years, and I will again. I'll take a few weeks away from the game to process everything and build myself back up. He told fans he'd be back for the Genesis Scottish Open in July, an event he won last year, and he will be in the British Open at Royal Troon from July 18 to 21. Having said that, Rory isn't the only golf player in history who lost a title so miserably. Soon after the tournament, Scott Van Pelt, a senior sports center anchor, highlighted the significance of McElroy's silence and offered his perspective on his decision. Rory McElroy is one of my favorite interviews because I do think whenever you ask him a question, he thinks and gives you an answer. It's not a kind of pre-written answer. He actually gives thought to your questions and his answers. Rory is one of my very favorite people in the sport for a lot of different reasons. One, he's a thinker, and he answers things thoughtfully. He's also a great champion, and today, understandably, is a bitter pill. A chance to end this major list drought, and it slips away as it did. He also got into comparisons with some past similar events in golf. Now, I think about Phil Mickelson in the 2006 US Open, who hit off a beer 10 on the 72nd hole at winged foot to lose with a double, and he said afterward, I'm such an idiot. Also, Greg Norman melted over the course of five brutal hours at the Masters in 96 as his seemingly insurmountable lead evaporated. When it mercifully ended, Norman stood there under the magnolia trees in darkness, but answered the questions about what happened. I'm certain he would have preferred that the earth opened up and swallowed him whole, but he stood there and he took it. On Sunday, unlike champions of the past who faced the media after crushing defeats, McElroy did not. How it got away this Sunday and the fact that he walked away without speaking about it will both be remembered, says Van Pelt. But Rory handled the situation quite gracefully, if you ask us, containing himself on field and taking social media after processing such a huge loss in his career. We're eager to see what this pro golfer has to show in the upcoming game, especially when he has promised to come back stronger. That's a Rory back to Rory leads by two. That's all the scoop on Rory's unforgettable weekend. Sometimes the toughest part isn't the game itself, but facing the music when things don't pan out. Remember, it's not just about how you fall, it's about how you get back up. So what do you think? Can Rory flip the script for himself next time, or is this a new trend? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. We're open to start off a chat. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed what you saw, and subscribe for more gritty golf tales like this one. Thanks for watching. I will catch you on the next one.